Okay, please close your eyes for a second and imagine this scenario. One round, you're him. You land two clean one-taps and feel like Prime Nico. But the very next round, you low-key forget how to play the game. With a free kill and congrats, you lost your team the round. I am so knowing all that, is your aim good or is it bad? In CS2, that question is surprisingly hard to answer. We judge our aim based on a few games, our current form or even just one single round. And these things tend to vary quite a bit. Luckily, there's a better way to measure your aim. And my goal with this video is to explain aim benchmarks as well as I can, so you get an accurate representation of your aim as a whole. And make sure to watch till the very end. I'll be sharing insights directly from the best aimer in our community, including what most people get completely wrong about benchmarks. If you want to improve, you seriously don't want to miss it. And speaking of things you don't want to miss, a sound cue. One single footstep can decide the entire round. That's why I've been using Sonar, a completely free audio software from SteelSeries. Its advanced parametric EQ lets you fine-tune your sound so you hear everything with insane accuracy. You can even separate game audio from voice chat for a perfectly balanced soundscape. And if your mic sounds like total garbage, Sonar also got you covered. And yes, it works with any headset. Sonar even comes with presets made with pro players, so you don't need to waste hours tweaking settings. Just pick your game of choice and you're done. I've been testing it in CS2 and honestly, the difference is actually noticeable. Wait, this is insane. What? With Sonar, there's no excuse for missing a sound cue. Download it right now using my link in the description and start experimenting. And if you're looking to upgrade your setup too, Use code BILY15 for 15% off everything on the SteelSeries website. Big thanks to SteelSeries for sponsoring this video, and now let's test your aim. In CS, one day you top frag, and the very next day you're getting refragged by your teammates. The inconsistency makes it hard to know if you're actually improving. Benchmarks solve this by giving you standardized and repeatable scenarios, specific categories like flicking or tracking, and many subcategories like reactive tracking, objective ranks, and most importantly, a clear progression path. That means there's no stupid teammates, no 100 ping, and pretty much no randomness, just you, your mouse, and your aim. If your scores are going up, your aim is getting better. Period. <clears throat> Period. And here's a quick rundown of how all benchmarks work. There's always a set of predefined scenarios, and each one targets a different aim skill. You complete the scenarios, get your scores, and based on your performance, boom, you get a rank. Each scenario has its own rank, and then you get an overall rank as well once you finish all of them. Usually there are three difficulty levels. Beginner, intermediate, and advanced, sometimes worded a bit differently, but the concept stays the same. If it's your first time doing any sort of aim benchmark, start with the lowest level. Play every scenario at least once, and if you manage to get the highest possible rank in all scenarios at that level, that's a clear sign your mechanics are solid. And obviously, if you ace all your intermediate scenarios on your first try, First of all, you might be a super gifted aimer, but also just move up to advanced. While researching for this video, I found out that there are uncountably many benchmarks I have never heard of. Obviously, there's no point in covering all of them, so let's break down the most popular ones, starting with Aimlabs and Kovacs official benchmarks. But let's start with Aimlabs because it's the newest and surprisingly really good. When you open Aimlabs now, you get access to their official benchmarks by, well, clicking at the benchmarks button. Here, the only two things I would recommend you pay attention to are challenges and rank distribution. The challenges tab is where the actual benchmark happens. You'll see a set of scenarios I mentioned previously that you're required to play, and based on your performance in those, Aimlabs will generate your rank. Once you finish the benchmark, head over to the rank distribution tab. This part, at least in my opinion, is mostly for fun, but it also offers a bit of value. It shows where your score places you globally. If you're in the top 0.01%, you can take a screenshot and flex on your friends. Totally optional, but pretty satisfying. Now I have to admit, I was really surprised by how good the Aimlabs benchmark actually is. The scenarios are well balanced, the difficulty curve makes sense and the ranks actually feel accurate. Most importantly though, it's fun to play. I totally didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I did. 
Unfortunately though, I can't say the same thing about the Kovacs official benchmark. Don't get me wrong, the scenarios themselves are fun, as expected from Kovacs, but the ranking system is a bit scuffed. I ran the whole benchmark once, just once, and I was already almost at the highest rank, which sounds good, right? Wow, I'm such a cracked aimer, but then I realized that's it. There's nothing left to aim for and no long-term progression. They literally said, congrats, you're almost maxed out. Now go and have fun, kid. <laughs> fun? What fun? I am here to improve my f aim and not to have any fun. What the f To find the Kovacs benchmark, go to their site and click on benchmark tracker. From there, you'll have to find Kovacs Aim Official. Click Load Benchmark and get to setting your scores. So yeah, I'm almost maxed out in Kovacs benchmarks. Meanwhile, I'm not even the top rank in Intermediate Aimlabs benchmarks. So something's clearly off here. If I had to choose between the two, Aimlabs Official benchmark absolutely wipes the floor with Kovacs Official one. Sorry for the pause, but I'm trying to hit 20,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you're enjoying the video, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed. Also, join my Discord to find my aim routines, Twitch stream schedule and much more. Thank you so much for the support. Now let's talk about the gold standard of aim benchmarks. The Voltaic benchmarks. If you've ever taken aim training seriously, then you've 100% heard of Voltaic. It's a competitive aim community that's been around for years and built what's widely considered the most detailed and respected aim benchmark system out there. They even have multiple versions like Voltaic Valorant, which focuses on TAC FPS aiming, but in this video I'm going to focus on the OG, the universal one that tests your raw mechanics across pretty much all FPS games. Voltaic uses specific scenarios inside Kovacs. Each scenario obviously gets its own rank, from Bronze to Celestial, also with three different categories of difficulty. In order to try the benchmarks yourself, go to app.voltaic.gg, sign in with Discord, go to your profile and select the difficulty of the benchmark and click Open Playlist. Now Kovacs is going to open and you're ready to test your aim using the Voltaic benchmark. It's honestly one of the most polished aim training tools ever made and it's all for free. Made by aimers, for aimers. If someone asks for your aim rank, there's a 99% chance they're asking for your Voltaic benchmark rank. And finally, my personal favorite and something much newer, but really promising, Viscos benchmarks. Viscos is already one of the most respected creators in the aim community, and her benchmark system feels like a true extension of that. And when by far the best aimer in the world praises your stuff, then you know it's the real deal. If Voltaic Benchmark is the OG, data-driven, elite system for aim training, then the Viscos one is like its younger cousin, the one that's a bit more fun at parties. The thing that stood out to me the most is exactly that, the fact how enjoyable and fun it was to play the scenarios. When you play the Voltaic Benchmark, and then Aimlabs and Kovacs ones, they all have very similar, dare I say, repetitive scenarios. Viscos breaks that mold. As Minigod said, it's training disguised as a benchmark. You're improving without even realizing it, and that's when aim training gets really good. To find Visco's benchmarks, head over to evxl.app. And please don't ask me why it's named like that, I don't know either. Enter your Steam URL and search Visco's. Now, whenever you play the scenarios from the benchmark, your scores will get automatically updated here. You'll find the link to it and every other benchmark in the description. And if you've completed the Visco's benchmark, feel free to use this screenshot to translate the rank to the Voltaic one. First of all, pick one benchmark and run every scenario from there. My recommendation would be either to use Visco's benchmarks or Voltaic benchmarks. Look at your scores and especially at your weaknesses. Ask yourself a question. Which aim category is holding your aim back? For me, everything is pretty equal, but static has always been my worst category. That's why I'm currently running a playlist focused on static scenarios, and over time, I'm hoping to see those benchmark scores naturally improve. You want to improve at benchmarks as a consequence of playing the playlist you're using in your routine. Not grind benchmarks just to score cheese for hours. The same way you don't become a bodybuilder by only training your biceps. Now when it comes to tracking progress, I'll let Viscos herself explain it because she probably does a better job than me. I would recommend only playing the benchmarks maybe two times a week at most, but I still think most of your time should be spent practicing. As a baseline when starting out, 
If you want to aim train every day, I would recommend spending three days playing playlists that target weak areas in your benchmarks, two days playing either the fundamental or game specific routines for your game of choice, and the other two days benchmarking, but this is just a guideline. Now I hope you understand what kind of benchmarks are out there and how to actually use them to become a better aimer, and as a consequence, a better player. But I totally get it if you don't want to listen to some master noob talking nonsense, so it's time to let Slendro take over. He's currently Voltaic Nova, and I swear every time I see his name pop up on the leaderboard, it's just a straight up reminder of how far I still have to go. Just over a year ago though, he was Diamond. So yeah, there's hope for both me and you to rank up our aim. Anyway, I asked him a few questions that I think most of you are probably wondering too. So let's get into his answers. In your opinion, which benchmarks give the most accurate picture of someone's overall aim skill? This is a very tricky question because it kinda depends on the approach you use in-game. If we use CS as an example, one could potentially say that the Anima benchmarks are most accurate for in-game skill. However, that assumes you're only relying on micro-adjustments. That doesn't really reflect someone who's opping or entering aggressively. Your real skill is defined by what you can do with your aim not just how flashy it looks. And for that reason, I think broader benchmarks like Viscosis one gives the clearest picture of actual ability. I couldn't agree more with Slendro here. There are many different styles of aiming just in CS2 alone, and good aim isn't just about cringe TikTok edits or 180 degree one-taps. Good aim is reliable when the fight should go your way, or it's there to sometimes bail you out of these tough situations. When you improve in benchmarks, do you feel it in CS2? Yes, I do see the improvement from getting stronger at the benchmarks, but the most amount of improvement is always gained from consciously applying the principles you have learned in the trainer into the game. I often find that too many people just want to get better raw aim, rather than getting a better fundamental understanding of how to aim, which hinders their improvement. This is probably the most underrated part of aim training. If you just autopilot through your playlists and expect to magically become a god in CS, I'm sorry, but it won't happen. You need to bridge the gap, understand what you're training, why you're training it, and how to apply it when it matters. Otherwise, you're just farming numbers and getting better in aim trainers, instead of improving in-game. What are the most common mistakes people make when using benchmarks? The most common problem I see when a new player uses the benchmark has to be the tendency to just mindlessly replay the task a lot of times without taking time to deliberate or adjust or play other scenarios that cover their weaknesses. You need to specify your training more, or else you run into the risk of putting in way too many hours without seeing any improvement. Another common problem I see is that people don't account for the techniques they use for each task. If your technique is designed only for a certain type of task, and it is incompatible with other kinds of scenarios, you will have a very hard time translating it into the game. If your technique is bad, you'll just hit a wall. If you got used to one scenario and then you play a different one that requires a completely different technique, everything else falls apart. You should get accustomed to blending all techniques together and using each of them at the right time. Is grinding benchmark scores necessary or should you focus more on aim routines or aim playlists? I am not really someone who uses all that many playlists. To me, they are more a collection of useful tasks rather than a chore that you have to get through. If I am playing a playlist and I see a task that I don't find useful to my current training, I will just skip it. Additionally, if there is a task that I just don't find fun, I will skip it as well. So no, grinding benchmarks isn't necessary for improvement, but it helps specify your training. Yes, yes, yes! The best playlist is the one that you'll actually stick to. Aim training isn't supposed to feel like homework, it's a fun, improving tool. If you're forcing yourself through scenarios you hate, you'll burn out. There are a lot of scenarios that you can use instead of the ones you don't like. Build something that works for you and not against you. And just a quick disclaimer, if all you do is grind benchmarks without actually playing CS, you'll just get better at benchmarks and not the game. So yeah, that's everything I wanted to cover. Huge shout out to Slendro again for sharing his insight. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, consider dropping a like, and if you're serious about improving, this channel is exactly where you wanna be. Also, check out the newest video on Inner Circle, where we trolled a pro CS2 team. The link is also in the description. Good luck with your training, and keep grinding.